Today I want to speak about the marks and the fruits of false teachers, of false prophets. You see, the Bible is speaking plainly about false prophets, false teachers, anti-Christs, anti-Messiahs. Both the Lord and the Apostles spoke about this and they spoke much about it. You see, chiefly I want to speak about who is a true prophet. Moses, the man of God, highly esteemed in Christianity, highly esteemed in Judaism, was a true prophet. Why was Moses a true prophet? Moses didn't do things on his own accord. Amen. Moses did things based on God's agenda. When he spoke, he spoke what God told him to speak. You see, the Bible says that Moses was the most humble man in the earth. If you look at the other prophets, prophet Jeremiah, prophet Isaiah, these were people who were not seeking their own interest. They were not seeking to gain attention, uh, to gain something from men, out based on the human nature. You see, Second Peter 2, 18, I think. They are using empty words of vanity, flattering you, they are appealing. I mean appealing to the desires of the flesh, the false prophets, not the true ones. King David, he was a kind of a prophet, the Bible portrays him as a prophet, though in another sense, you see, a man after God's heart, a man who wasn't focused on himself, he was focused on the will of God, he was focused on doing the things out from God's heart, from God's agenda, and when he did wrong, when he did sin, he did repent quickly. In anguish, in agony, in regret, in remorse, you see. So, Second Peter 2 is taking on false teachers. There will be false teachers, just as there were false prophets in the old, in the old covenant, you see. And they will secretly introduce destructive heresies. So a false teacher and a false prophet is teaching the Word of God, but secretly introducing something, twisting the Word of God, distorting the Word of God. So, in order to get your attention, because who are they targeting? They are targeting the sheep of God, you see, to make them live, stay in error. So when they are teaching these heresies, they are thinking, the sheep, the people, who are listening to them, who are sitting under them, they think that they are on the way to paradise. You see? Because the word of God is preached, is teached, you see, and all these other things are going on. Many will follow them in their depraved conduct. So, the Bible says that these false teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. And my friends, this is a speciality. This is something that they are professional on or with. Fabricated stories, made up stories, you see. They are standing in front of you with persuasion, but they are standing and lying, you see. No wonder, because Satan is the chief liar, you see, the father of lies. So they are lying to you. It seems like it's the truth, it seems so convincing, you see, but it's fabricated stories. These false teachers have eyes full of adultery, Apostle Paul says. They never stop sinning. And they are seducing the unstable, you see. You see those people who have just come to faith. Those baby Christians. Those sheep that are so dear in the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are targeting them, you see. You remember that uh, Apostle Paul was speaking about not being tossed back and forth by what? False doctrine. You see, growing up to maturity. That's why they are dangerous. Because you can't grow up to maturity with a false teacher, with a false prophet, with a false evangelist, a false apostle. The Bible says that God sat in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, so that the body of Christ can grow up to maturity. You see? You can't grow up to maturity with false doctrine. You cannot grow up to maturity sitting under a false prophet. 
Apostle Peter said, they're experts in greed. Experts in greed. Abandoning the straight way, they follow the false teacher Balaam. So here we are, Second uh, Peter 2.18, mouthing empty boastful words, you see. They are boasting, they are speaking out of arrogance. The Lord Jesus said, beware of wolves, you see. Beware of false prophets. By the fruits you shall know them. Like the man of God, Moses. I spoke about Moses. These people, they cannot have that attribute or that character of humility. They will have a character of arrogance. A character of pride, you see. So, Apostle Paul continued to say, They promise you freedom. They promise you freedom, but themselves, they are slaves, you see. Themselves, they are slaves. So they are standing, preaching, teaching, with persu uh, persuasive words, convincing you, you see, with great words. Much turmoil in their meetings, you see. Or they have the cross with them. But themselves, they are slaves to sin, you see. If you look behind the curtains, maybe you don't want to look behind the curtains, because if the Lord begins to reveal to you some things that are going on, you will get shocked, and, and you will cry, and you will go on your knees, you will be in pain, your heart will be aching, that people are deceived by these people, you see. So Jude, he also mentioned, he spoke about this false teacher, false prophets. He said certain people have crept in. You see, what does that mean? Among you. Who is you? Who is the Christian, you see? So these false people, false prophets, I mean false teachers, have crept in. They have been, they have sneaked in by a side door. You see? So they come in secretly. And they, like I wrote, I quoted for you, secretly introducing false doctrine. Twisting or distorting the grace of God into a license for sensual self-indulgence and denying our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. I've been meditating on that. Denying the Lord Jesus Christ, but they preach the Lord Jesus. They preach the Lord Jesus. They preach salvation. They have the name of the Lord in their preachings, in their sermons, in their teaching. But what did the Lord tell us, beloved? He said... If you are to follow me, you have to take up the cross and deny yourself. Deny the lust of the human nature, the human desires. Deny yourself not having things your own way, you see. First Corinthians, first or second Corinthians chapter 13. Love is not self-seeking, you see. Denying yourself, not looking after your own way, having your own way. So these false prophets, these false teachers, in their way of living, they are denying the Lord. You see, they are living a life out from the human nature, the sinful nature that Jesus had to die for on the cross. You see, they live according to their lustful passions and desires. And they appeal to the human nature. Do you remember the video I shared? Here on Facebook, when I spoke about the Shalchan, the Hebrew word Shalchan, marriage broker, you see, that I was talking about that a true, genuine servant of God will not appeal to the desires of your flesh. You see, he won't not appeal, the Lord won't appeal, or you someone to appeal to your human nature. This is why he died for, you see, the sin of the flesh. The, the, the flesh, the human nature, the unregenerated human nature could not be regenerated. You see? The law, under the law, the law couldn't do something. You see? The Lord Jesus had to die. You see? And then from the inside, when we walk in love, we follow the law. So, I'm going to go into one other uh, book, First Timothy chapter 4. I want just to point out one thing to... Try to open your eyes, you see, about these uh, uh, false prophets and false teachers. And I want to make another video where I take more on these things. I will embark more on these characteristics, this how we can distinguish, you see, the true from, from the false, you see. So that you, the purpose is, my friends, that you will be able to 
more readily see who is a genuine man of God, woman of God, who is a true and a false prophet, true servant of God, true apostle, who is a false one, you see. Look at what Paul said to Timothy, Apostle Paul. They forbid marriage. They forbid marriage. Does that ring a bell? We have shared here on Facebook, on this platform, about T.B. Joshua, who is a dangerous, false teacher, false prophet. You see, if you look into his so-called ministry, you have a bunch of women who have been growing up under his mentorship, who have been growing up under that ministry. They were taken in, recruited at a young age, and they never got married. If you look at their lives today, they are not married. They are living in that ministry. Not getting married, something is wrong. And we know that uh, T.B. Joshua is sleeping with his women and they are doing all sorts of uh, uh, abhorrent, disgusting things uh, on him. I have no interest about speaking about these things in detail. But my point is, Apostle Paul said, forbid marriage in order to abstain from certain foods, you see. So, the conclusion is, in the Word of God, you can expose, by reading the Word of God, by really taking time to study the Scripture, both the Old and the New Testament, you will be able to expose these false prophets, false teachers, anti-Messiahs, you see. So this topic is so long that I need to make it in uh, several sections, several segments. So this will be the first part about uh, this topic, false teachers, the traits, the, the fruits, the marks of false teachers. So God bless you as you take time to always study the Word of God, believing that the Lord wants to reveal and is revealing the Word of God to you alone. So God bless you.